there's something growing in Jersey City. And for a change, it's not the crime rate, drug infestation, or the levels of poverty. Right in the middle of Greenville, the worst of the worst neighborhoods is an oasis, a working farm producing everything from lettuce and tomatoes to onions and fresh corn. But the real story here is about the tenders of the crops. The new age farmers are all ex-convicts, some having served lengthy sentences for serious crimes, including murder. Now, thanks to the program called Friends of the Lifers, once hardened men are sowing the seeds of hope, learning a trade, and perhaps better acclimating into society. There's always to be a person that say that he doesn't deserve a second chance. Mark Graham is a member of Friends of the Lifers. Before joining the group, he served 16 years in prison for weapon charges and another six years for prison violation. So how did you hear about the program? Um, the Green Thumb program was just this program, but um, the Friends of Life has always been connected with them since like 2008. I the, shirt. the founder of the Friends of the Lifers is Harvey George. He knew that adjusting to civilian life and finding a job after prison would be difficult and developed a program based on a simple concept. If you can't get a job, create one. George started a life sentence in February of 1978. So how long were you in prison? 17 and a half years. 17 years, yeah. that's a long time. So I'm sure a lot of people want to know why you were in prison. Aiden and abetting conspiracy, Aiden and abetting a homicide. See, I had to learn how to say that. I didn't want to say murder. What, what kind of homicide? I introduced a guy to um, a fence to get rid of some jewelry. And uh, him and the fence got into a beef about money, and I think the fence was trying to take the jewelry. He killed the guy, and he called me and said, hey, look, I need to get back into New York. On the way to New York, he tells me, he said, man, I had to get rid of that guy. So how much time were you supposed to do, or was it supposed life. to be 17 years? In fact, I was... Uh, you were supposed to do life in prison? I have life. I have life. I've been on parole 20 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So how, what did you do to get out early, or...? Well, I guess you said good behavior. I did everything I could. I did every program I could. I went to school. I did everything I could. And then they recommended that they give me 10 more years. And what was that for? <laughs> to let me know, don't do it no more. Gotcha. But uh, the warden, you know, he knew I had been trying, so he said, well, he said, you know, Mr. George, I can't do nothing for you. Well, he said, Harvey, you know, there's nothing that I can do for you about what they're going to do. He said, but I'm going to tell you a little something. I got a lot of faith in you. He said, you got minimum, and I'm going to put you in the halfway house. He said, you got six months. Show them what you do working with. And you sure did. Yes, I did. Do you feel that the city doesn't provide the people with enough choices or ex-offenders with enough choices? Of course not. And I think some, uh, let me say this, there's an element of city and county who's beginning to look at it and beginning to, you know, ver you know give verbal homage to it. Where did you come up with the name Friends of the Lifers? Because I ran the program in prison called the Lifers Group Scared Straight. And so I wanted to emphasize my intent is that the Lifers had a friend out here that would help them when they got out. Friends of the Lifers costs about $25,000 a year to operate and is funded by the Hudson County and Jersey City Community Development. Annette Joyner-Jackson is the executive director of Friends of the Lifers and understands the struggle of these ex-convicts because she too did prison time. She was caught selling drugs. Do you feel that everyone deserves a second chance? Definitely. Everyone deserves a second chance because you never know why an individual um, got in a situation that they, you know, they got in. What stopped me was it was a wake up call when I went to jail and having to have to fight for yourself and protect yourself by all means necessary. 
It was something I said I would never relive again. And when I walked out of that jail, I never went back to the streets again. Never, never. The workers are given housing nearby, and we wondered what the neighbors thought about having ex-convicts working and living in their backyards. Maggie Dickinson doesn't like it, but thinks gentrification will soon take hold and clean things up. To me, that garden only be there for a couple of months. As soon as the developer come by and want that land for houses, the garden's gonna be gone. So that's why I'm not worried about it. Cheryl Brown, another Greenville resident, has a more practical approach. I really don't think that should make a difference. There's ex-offenders all over. So, you know what I'm saying? Practically everybody got an ex-offender in their family. I, I got them in mind, so. And I would like for somebody to give them a chance. I, I had a son that's ex-offender. He got his life started again, you know, so everybody needs a chance. Harvey George agreed. So what would you tell someone in the community who feels negative about Friends of the Lifers, who doesn't want you guys in this community doing what you're doing? Well, I tell them to look into their family and find that one that needs Friends of the Lifers. Then ask me, do you still want me to be out of here?